morning church it sounds like we've all recovered from our lost hour of sleep last week you're chatty this morning um, welcome to worship this morning it's a joy to be together uh, here at FPC we're a church that's seeking Christ and sharing his love and I um, hope that you uh, experience that love richly this morning we're gonna be in the Gospel of Mark chapter 4 so if you want to prepare a little bit and mark your Bibles uh, I encourage you to, to do so our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 128. It says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. Sisters and brothers, let us worship our God. say that we have no sin, the truth does not dwell within us. So let us confess our sin to our loving and faithful God by using the prayer of confession printed in our bulletins. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sin. Power beguiles us, and we deem ourselves worthy. Our good works convince us that we can assure our salvation. We heap treasures about us as signs of merit and status, then build elaborate defenses to keep our prizes secure. Forgive the illusion of our own greatness, and in Christ humble us to receive your reward.
Lord's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. on this Lord's Day, and it's great to see the sun shining. We're hoping that it's going to continue to shine all week long and into next Sunday. You'll find out why I'm worth, uh, hoping that in a few minutes. But right now, we'd love for you to find the connection card that is um, attached to your bulletin. Fill that out. Um, let us know your information. And then on the back, if you have a prayer concern or praise, please let us know that. If you would like for it to be confidential, check the confidential box and only Jim Wood and I will see that. Otherwise, our elders, deacons, and prayer ministers will pray over those prayer requests. It is a great blessing for us to be able to offer um, that, that spiritual and prayer support. Also, online, if you are, we're so glad to be with you on your device and in your home or wherever you may be, um, there's a connection link right above the live feed, so please um, click on that. We do want to know that you're, you're there, there with us as well, and um, let us know if your prayer concerns. Um, just a reminder that uh, we have a great website, so we want to make sure that you visit that. It's fbcnorfolk.org, and um, there's wonderful ways to connect with us online and learn more information. If you click on the media page, there's all sorts of classes that you can watch and find out more and dive deeper in your relationship with Jesus. So we hope that you'll take advantage of that. So great things happening in the life of our congregation. Um, you'll see in the bulletin this morning two inserts. One is about Ukraine, and we'll be talking about that later in the service. And right now, um, if you are interested in connecting in a group, in a community group, if you're not already in one and want to be a part of one, fill this out. Let us know the kind of group you're looking for, or you can use the QR code on the back if you'd rather use your phone and do it virtually. So um, we are very excited to to connect people with one another so that you can build relationships and friendships here at First Presbyterian. Um, let's see, what else? And, okay, so next week, uh, we are excited, pray for sunshine. We are having a parking lot party, and this church, folks, knows how to partay. So we want you to come and be a part of it. It starts at 4 o'clock. We've got happy meals for everybody because we're happy that it's spring and we're happy that the sun is out. So we've got sliders and chicken tenders. Right, Heather? Yeah, chicken tenders. Um, with sauce, I think. It's going to be great. So come, bring your family. Come, get a parking place. Pull out your lawn chairs. It's for everybody. Don't think it's not for you because it is. It is awesome. Sign up. You can go online, sign up, let us know you're coming, and we will just keep the party going all spring long. All right. Good morning, kiddos. This is morning. If you want to come take a seat on the first row, if you are a kid, um, come on down and take a seat. And Sadie, you come be my helper. Stand right here. Um, Sadie is my friend at preschool, and she is going to help me with the children's sermon today. And Joel is going to be preaching on something in the New Testament, and we know that the New Testament is really special because, take a seat, um, because Jesus is the star of the show. The New Testament is the second part of the Bible where um, it's about the birth of Jesus, about Jesus' life, and he does all kinds of miracles, and he teaches, and does all kinds of wonderful things that shows us how we're going to live as Christians. Right, Jesse? Well, hello, Maya. Good morning. Come here. Come take a seat. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and so today, Joel is going to be talking 
um, about a story, and it's a special kind of story, when Jesus was a teacher, um, back when Jesus was on earth, he told stories and they were called parables. Have you ever heard of a parable before? A parable is a story that's made up so that Jesus can teach us how to live, and it had a moral to it, and it, it was supposed to teach us something special. So uh, it's getting warm. How many of you raise your hand if you have a garden in your house when it's warm? And you can do you plant vegetables, do you plant flowers? Um, what do you plant? What do you plant? You don't know. We grow vegetables, but we mostly grow flowers because I'm better at growing flowers. You, what do you grow, Sadie? All the flowers were dead. So you're not very good at it. Um, you, but you, you grow vegetables, right? And you have a compost bin at your house. So you're, I think you're better at it, or your mom is better at it than you think you are. But today, Jesus is telling a story about a sower, which is a farmer, who throws seeds all across the place, right? You throw seeds, and he threw seeds on the pathway, and birds got it. And if a bird were to pick up a seed and fly away, would we have anything grow? No. And then we had... Um, the farmer throws seeds on rocks. What do you think would happen if we threw seeds on rocks? Bugs would pick it up. Do you think anything would grow? The sun would burn it up and nothing would grow. And then the sower, the farmer, would, um, he threw seeds on weeds. So there are weeds growing in here with dirt. And the weeds choked out the seed. The seed did not grow. And then finally... The farmer threw seed on healthy soil. See that? You think seeds will grow well in there? Yes. I have, and it needs good. It needs good soil. It needs water. It needs sun. And so this story that Jesus is telling is telling us how to be a Christian and how to follow Jesus. And the seeds. The farmer is Jesus, or the, our God, and the seeds are the Bible and the Word of God, and we are supposed to be like the good soil, not the rocks, right? Not the weeds, because sometimes we hear the Bible and we put the seeds in there, but sometimes life gets us in the way and life chokes out what Jesus wants us to do. But he wants us to follow Jesus. He wants us to plant the Bible in something healthy so that we can listen to God and we can share God's word with others and we can come to church and all of those wonderful things that make us a great follower of Christ. So I'm going to close this in prayer and we are going to uh, go to children's church. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for the privilege that we have to be here today, Lord. And thank you for the opportunity that we have to hear your word as you spread your seed. Um, and that we pray, Lord, that we will be... Uh, good, healthy soil so that we can listen and read your word and we can be wonderful Christians that you have called us to be. In your heavenly name, amen. All right, let's go, let's go. Come on. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord for a wonderful spring day today. And in this season, we are seeking to turn our eyes upon Jesus. And so our choir, Ashlyn, is going to uh, lead us um, as we seek to turn our eyes upon Jesus.
Um, so as we turn uh, this morning, as we turn our eyes upon Jesus, and as we turn um, to the Word, we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Um, but before we get there, I'd like to start with a, a question, or have you consider for yourself a question, and that is, who is the person in your life that has taught you the greatest lessons, has had the greatest impact, has shaped who you are today? Um, as we look at this text this morning, and as we um, dive in, I'd like you to keep that person in mind. As I've been in this text this week, I've been reflecting a lot on great teachers and lessons in life, and particularly on this idea of how we are taught, but also by whom we are taught. So as we turn to the text, um, a little bit of background for us is, uh, is important to understand what's happening. So in Mark chapter 4, um, we're very early in the gospel, but already in just these short chapters um, leading up to this, Jesus and the disciples are in Capernaum. They're by the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus is causing a stir. He's, he's riling up um, quite a fuss. Crowds are growing. People are gathering to seek him. Um, they're searching him out for healing, for wise teaching. Meanwhile, the teachers of the law the scribes are growing more and more unhappy with what Jesus is saying and what he's doing. Even Jesus' own mother and brothers, his family, are trying to get to him um, as these crowds grow and press in around him. And as you read these first three chapters, you get this sense that everybody is asking either, who is this Jesus that heals, that teaches this wisdom? Or in the case of the scribes, who does this Jesus think that he is? And so the crowds grow and they draw in upon him. And Jesus climbs into a boat and begins to teach. And so that's where we'll pick up this morning in Mark 4, beginning at verse 1. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, it grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path, where the word is sown, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. And others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, this is a challenging passage. It's challenging because it's dense. There's a lot in it, a lot to unpack. It's 
uh, challenging teaching and, and all of the action that's going on around it. So as we approach it, it really has three aspects, three main parts. So first, Jesus teaches a crowd using a parable, and everybody, the disciples included, are left scratching their heads. Then in the center section, Jesus explains why he teaches in parables with this riddle-like prophecy from Isaiah. And then thirdly and finally, Jesus explains the parable, but he explains it in a way that raises more questions than it answers. Right, questions like, am, am I the soil? Which soil am I? Um, is God the farmer? If, if I'm on thorny soil, can I remove those thorns? If, if Satan has taken the word before it sprouted, how will I even know and what can I do about it? But central to this passage is this teaching and this explaining of a parable. So let's start there. What is a parable? It's important to understand what parables are because it's Jesus' preferred teaching method. Over and over again throughout the Gospels, Jesus teaches and explains by using parables. The word parable simply means to throw alongside of. And it's a way that a teacher can use familiar imagery and, and concepts to explain the deeper meaning. And it's especially useful when that concept is new, it's abstract, it's deep, and difficult to understand. So imagine the concept this new teaching, this, this new thing to understand, the teacher will put imagery alongside to draw you in, to draw parallels, to, to start to unfold the concept. So um, to give you an example, to kind of a practical way of looking at this, imagine that you want to teach a five-year-old that arrogance is bad. Quite a task. Um, you have an option, you have a couple options. The first option is to simply say, look kid, I know you're the fastest in, in gym class, but don't be arrogant, arrogant about it, because that's bad. And that'll work, right? We all know five-year-olds, that, that's end of story. Um, your second option is to create some context, to create a deeper understanding by using a story, by putting some, some meat on the bone. Now, it's cheesy. So bear with me. But you could use the fable, the old fable of the tortoise and the hare in this case. Right? We all know the story. There's a hare who is fast and he's friends with a tortoise. The hare challenges the slow tortoise to a race. The race begins. The, the hare sees how slowly the tortoise is going and he thinks, I'll win this easily. So he stops to take a nap. When he wakes up, the tortoise who had just slowly plodded along is at the finish line and wins the race. And the hare is sad because the tortoise won the race because the hare was arrogant. So by this parable, by this story, that a parent can give context and meat to the concept of arrogance. And there's a bonus point because it conveys the principle of why arrogance is bad. So Jesus is giving the disciples the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And rather than say, this is what the kingdom of heaven is, and a checklist, and say that it's good, and here's a book on theology, here's a book on doctrine, read this, do the assignments in the back, and you'll get it. He instead uses parables. He uses earthly imagery to begin to unfold this mystery and the awesomeness of God. And have you ever noticed how these parables, this parable of the soil, requires wrestling and thought, and it's challenging. That's because the other reason Jesus teaches in parables to explain the kingdom of God and the things of, of the nature of God is because it forces you to ask questions. It forces you to wrestle with meaning. So go back to that person in your life. Think about that person that has shaped you and has taught you the greatest life lessons. Um, whoever that person may be, I'd like you to think of them and then think of the one greatest thing that they taught you. What's that one key instruction that they gave you? Perhaps it's something as simple as how to swing a baseball bat. 
or how to change a tire, or how to tie a necktie, or how to sew a button. Some, some task, some skill for adulthood. Now imagine that lesson typed out in a step-by-step -step guide in a textbook that you could read and learn how to do that thing and take the person out of the equation. It doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't shape you in the same way. It doesn't change your life. It just gives you a skill. You see, a good lesson is nothing without a great teacher. And you can't receive a good lesson from a great teacher unless you're in a relationship with a great teacher. So Jesus is in Capernaum, and crowds are pressing in around him. Some are amazed at the things he's saying and doing. Some are outraged at the things he's saying and doing. And for practical reasons, Jesus gets into a boat. It creates some space that gives him room to breathe so he can teach. It also creates amplification so he can be heard. There's reasons he gets into the boat. But it also allows him to be seen fully and to be heard as he teaches these parables. And then the key phrase for us comes, the key word comes in verse 3. As Mark tells us, he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, listen. Listen. Our translation cheats us a little bit this morning. Um, there's actually two phrases there, two imperatives that Jesus begins with. He says, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow seed. He begins with hear and see. And as we, we focus on this, verse 12, this prophecy begins to take on a new light. They may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding, otherwise they may turn and be forgiven. And so we realize we are called to be perceiving and understanding of Jesus. We're not called to analyze the soil, but to continually hear and see, to look and to listen to Jesus. Now the parable itself has great kingdom teaching. There's deep truth in understanding and wrestling with its meaning. But if we don't have a relationship with the teacher, and if our eyes are not first and fully on Jesus, then we're just like that seed along the path where the word is snatched immediately before taking root. Or if we hear the words of Jesus with joy, we take a small kernel of application and we apply it to our lives and we run out without any root, then when troubles arise, we're scorched by the sun and we wither quickly. Or if we're like the seed that hears the word and begins to grow and begins to form roots, but then allows the thorns and the weeds and the things of the world, the worries, the anxieties, the striving to attain, things that the world says matter, They'll choke us, and we'll say things like, I hear you, Jesus, but my job, my kids, school, this project, this thing, I just, I just need to put my head down in this season and get through. And although we have roots, we bear no fruit because we can't get past the thorny weeds to Jesus. But finally, there's the, the good soil. The cultivated soil. And if you've ever gardened, you know that soil that you scoop up a handful and it's light and it's airy, but it's dark and it's rich and it has a deep, earthy smell. And you just know, you smile, because anything you plant in that soil you know is going to take off. That's the soil that has its gaze transfixed upon Jesus. The soil that looks full in his wonderful face. And there are people in our lives that are rich in this kingdom soil. There are relationships that produce an abundant fruit. And the church is called to be that soil. The church is the hands and feet of Christ that's called to cultivate and work that soil. And it's messy, and you're going to get dirty. 
because it's dirt. <laughs> it's soil. But it's dirt and it's soil that produces a multiplying crop. So many of you know, um, I grew up in New Jersey. I'm proud of it. Um, I grew up in a, my, my childhood years were spent in a small Presbyterian church in a small rural farming community. I was an energetic child. I felt at home in the church. I loved being in church, which meant I drove everybody crazy. Um, I'd run around, I'd fidget, I'd climb over pews, I'd climb on things. Um, from time to time, I'd be paraded back down the center aisle to where my mother was sitting during the sermon by the Sunday school teacher. Not my proudest moment. <laughs> and I'd crawl under the pews during the sermon from front to back. Including the pew known as Widow's Row in our church. The pew where the great saints of the church sat week after week together. It was life-changing, kingdom soil people like Helen Walton, who I called my Helen, Carolyn Lear, and Peggy Inman, and my grandmother, Sarah Jean. They'd sit just in front of the pulpit, a few rows back, every week. And with the patience that only the great saints of the church possess, my grandmother would say to my mother, let Joel sit with me. <laughs> my grandmother was kingdom soil. I would sit for the sermon. And then after the sermon, we'd stand to sing the hymn, and I'd once again begin climbing. But this time I would climb onto the pew to stand shoulder to shoulder next to them, and to sing with this choir of saints. And as a boy, a page of music looked like Egyptian hieroglyphics. But I would hear the words rise up. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. And then looking at the page of the hymnal, I'd see a finger would point to each note rising, find my place again on each word. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great thou art. I didn't learn how to read a hymnal. I didn't learn how to worship by reading a textbook or going to a class. I learned how to worship in relationship, in the love of these women, these great saints who cultivate that soil that produces fruit 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. This great kingdom soil. There's kingdom soil in this place, in this church, in this family. Um, several years ago in Massanetta on the family mission trip, um, if you've never been, you're missing out. I encourage you to go. Um, but one night, so we finished the work, some of which included gardening, cultivating soil. We gathered for dinner. And for those of you who haven't been, dinner in Massanetta is served buffet style. So you get your tray, you get your plate, you get in line, you get your food. And then there's tables, family-sized dinner tables, all in one area. And so it was the last night of the trip, and I was the last person in line. I was getting my food, and I was looking to where the tables were to see where I would sit, looking for an open spot. And on this particular night, it struck me as I looked that not one family was sitting together with the family that they came with. They were all mixed together, and if you were an outsider, you wouldn't know who belonged with whom if you looked. It was as if everybody decided, we're just going to pick a new family for tonight and sit down. And it wasn't kids' table and adults' table. It was, it was families. And I think back on that now, and I can only imagine the seeds that were sown and cultivated in those conversations, talking about the day, talking about life, talking about sharing jokes and, and laughing and seeds that were sown that will produce abundant fruit for years to come. 
And so, I don't know, I don't know what your soil looks like today. I don't know what my soil looks like today. But I do know there's kingdom soil. And if we turn our eyes upon Jesus, the teacher tells us that the good soil produces fruit 30 and 60 and 100 times what it's sown. There's good kingdom soil in those relationships where perhaps you are called to seek forgiveness or to ask for forgiveness. It seems like a, like a small thing in such a great, challenging time, but this offering for Ukraine, this, this opportunity, this opportunity to, to plant a seed in kingdom soil that will have a, an amazing and multiplying impact on those who are seeking refuge and fleeing from war and violence. There's good soil in Massanetta. I encourage you to consider joining us in August and plant and grow relationships in your family and in your family's lives and in your life that will produce fruit in abundance. And in all these things, as you prepare to go out into the world this morning, and as you prepare to get down in the dirt and get dirty and to cultivate the soil as you're on your knees in the garden. Look up. Listen. Behold and understand and turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. And look not to the teaching alone, but to the teacher. The teacher who is the firstborn over all of the creation. The teacher who is the sinless son of God, the Messiah who has come to ransom many, as Mark tells us. Look to the teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have the wonderful opportunity, friends, to to respond to God's word so beautifully preached this morning and to be the good soil that Jesus is calling us to be as the church. So you'll um, have an opportunity, and just please don't pass the baskets yet. You'll have an opportunity in just a minute to, to give us your connection card and also to place your offering in the basket. Also, just want to remind you, we are in stewardship season, and if you haven't um, given your yearly pledge to the church and would like to do that, they, the pledge cards are in the pew bags with envelopes. Um, also, if you would like to respond to the Ukraine um, offering that we are doing today that will go to the Outreach Foundation, you can read more about the Outreach Foundation and the good work that they do all over the world. And they have, they have boots on the ground in places that will help our Ukrainian refugees. Uh, so to donate it in that way, you can pay by cash. Just use one of those envelopes in the pew backs. You can use a check with a memo line. Um, noting for the Ukraine, or you can use the kiosk out in the commons area. We know you want to pray about this, so this is something that you can respond to, not only today, but, but in the coming days as well. So um, online, if you, um, we encourage you to uh, give of your offering. There's a button above the live feed called Give. We also have text to give, and that number is 7575. 305683. You type in the word give, the amount you'd like to give, send the text, and it will walk you through the giving process. So I encourage you to take those baskets, pass them down your pew, um, deposit your connection card in there, your offerings, and let them go to the outside aisle, and our readers will pick up those baskets later on in the service. And let us continue to worship our wonderful and faithful God.
Jesus, we are overwhelmed by who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you call us into relationship with you. And we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to respond to your love and grace and mercy by giving of our tithes and offerings. We pray, Lord, that you would use our lives as you see fit to extend your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christian, in whom do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Please be seated. As we move into a time of prayer, we want to continue to turn our eyes upon Jesus. And if you have not picked up one of our uh, Lenten devotionals, we encourage you to do that. They're in uh, the baskets outside of the exits of the sanctuary. It will be a blessing for you every single day. We also want to pray for our world, for peace and for hope, especially for the Ukraine. Prayers for for the offering that we are taking, that, that every penny will be utilized to, to help our brothers and sisters there. We also want to pray um, closer to home for the violence in our own city and so many who were, who were um, shot and killed um, on Granby Street this, this past week. Just prayers for hope and healing for our city and, and ways and that the Lord would open ways to how, of how we can be the hands and feet of Christ in our city. We also want to pray for our Joy Village in Kenya. We have um, many birthdays to celebrate this month, but the kids that are there. So I'm just going to read their names. Um, Michelle Salome in Gerald on March the 5th, Simon on March the 8th, Christine M and Victor N on March the 9th, Ben on March the 10th. Safia on March the 12th, and Victor L. on March the 24th. So lots of birthdays to celebrate at the Joy Village, so we send our love and prayers to them and to their mamas as they celebrate all those birthdays. We also want to keep in prayer Jim and Cheryl Wood, um, our senior pastor and his wife, his sister, who he referenced in his sermon last week, Sarah. Sarah Wood Crouch died on Sunday afternoon last week, so prayers for them as they continue to mourn her loss. They were able to be in South Carolina with family this week and just prayers that they will continue to, to cling to the resurrection that, that Jesus offers to all of us. We also want to pray for our confirmation class and leaders. They're on a spiritual retreat this weekend and they're having tons of fun, I understand, not getting much sleep, so prayers for them. They're on the Eastern Shore, they'll return this afternoon. We received 108 prayer requests through our connection cards, prayers for family and friends, for um, those seeking healing and wholeness, prayers for guidance and discernment, and prayers for personal peace. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you and praise you for this day, for this opportunity, Lord, to gather together, to be reminded of fresh and new, to be good soil in this world. We thank you for the promises of your kingdom, and we thank you for calling us Jesus, your church, your hands and your feet and your heart. And so we pray, Lord, that you would continue to cultivate us as we seek to be good soil for the world. Lord, we thank you for the word so beautifully preached, and we pray, Lord, that it would grow mightily in us as we continue to um, live into your call for our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would be with every single prayer request that was shared, and every single prayer request that's on our hearts, Lord. We lift them all to you and pray that your will would be done. Hear us as we call on your name, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. worship for those of us who uh, lead worship we're very much still those children standing on the pews and um, and making it happen and um, we usually ask Valina what we're supposed to do next but I think we're going to start asking Joanne um, so if you're um, if you're worshiping with us for the first time we have a gift for you it's a book by Rick Warren called what on, what on earth am I here for it's a short read but it's a great great read um, you'll find it in the common area if you go through these doors and follow the smell of coffee um, and engage in some kingdom soil conversation as you do. There's dirty people out there. If you have something you want to lift up in prayer, our prayer team will be just down here on the other side of the communion table. Um, and it would be a privilege for them and a blessing for you um, to have them pray with and, and for you. And so um, here's the thing. Every Sunday at Plumstead Presbyterian Church in 
uh, New Egypt, New Jersey. I would run home, I'd get home from church, I'd eat lunch as fast as possible, I'd change out of my church clothes, and I'd put on my play clothes so that I could go out and get as dirty as possible. And so today, as we leave this place, let's go home and change out of our church clothes and put on our play clothes and get dirty in kingdom soil. And as you kneel down to scoop the dirt, look up and listen and behold the face of Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.